For those guests traveling from out of town, leaving something special in their hotel room is really sweet and thoughtful, and a bottle of wine is always the perfect gift. So what we're gonna do is make it a little more special by adding a pretty stenciled tote to your bottle of wine. And to do that, I have a plain wine canvas tote that I've already prepared and cut down a piece of cardboard to stick in between the two sides of the tote so that it fits nice and snug. And what this is doing is just giving it a hard surface to stencil on and also just so it doesn't go through to the other side. So once I have that positioned in there, I ch chosen a stencil and I have a nice doily stencil, kind of gives it a vintage feel with the old you know, style doily. And to attach the, the stencil to the bag, I'm using this stencil adhesive, which is a repositionable spray adhesive. All you have to do is give it a light spray like that. Hold it carefully, position it over your bag. And what I'm going to do and like is when I kind of off center things. So I'm gonna leave part of the stencil hanging off one side. I can stencil that on the back side after I've done this side. So I'm just pressing it down and you can see it's really adhered. You can kind of hear that tack. And what that stencil adhesive is gonna do is prevent the paint from seeping under, un under the stencil so that you get a nice clean crisp image when you're done. And here I have just some stenciling tape, also kind of a repositionable low tack tape. And I'm just gonna cover up any ex other exposed stencils that I don't want on this bag. Because stencil sheets usually come with multiple designs on them. So I'm just gonna cover the rest of those designs up so that I don't have any accidents and go into the wrong area. So it's pretty secure on there. Uh, I'm using a gray uh, acrylic paint. Any type of acrylic paint will work. And a stenciling brush. A stenciling brush is basically a flat, bristly brush that, that has enough surface area to cover enough of your bag as you're stenciling. I'm just gonna dip it into the paint. And then I always like to dip it off to the side to get any blobs of paint off. And then when I have that ready, I'm just going to stencil and paint right over here. So what's nice about this bristled brush is they're pretty hard bristles. So you can see I'm really pounding on it. And these bristles are getting into all the little the little grooves of the fabric so that you get a nice solid design on there. So I've already done almost a quarter of the design. I'm gonna add a little bit more paint, tap it off, and then continue to stencil. So you can do this until you have the whole front of your design covered in paint. Just keep reapplying the paint if you run out, it's actually a good workout. I'm just continuing to stencil. So I'm gonna show you this, when you're done stenciling it, you're gonna just put it aside, let it dry. And then when it's dry and you've lifted up the stencil, it'll look something like this. And what I've done is cleaned off my stencil, reapplied the repositionable adhesive and put the leftover of that design on the back side of the bag. So now I have a doily that continues from the front of the bag to the back side. So you can see it's right there on that seam. And the stencil is really easy to line up with your front and then flip it over so that you can see exactly where it's lined up perfectly. You can actually put your piece of cardboard in like this so that you see that front design. So you would just stencil that. So we're ready for more embellishing because it doesn't end there.
it's got to be nice and fancy. So step two for our wine tote is adding a little bit of bling with some heat set crystals. And what these are are little rhinestones with an adhesive back that is set with heat. So we'll be ironing them on. So what I'm gonna do is just pick up one crystal at a time and they stick nicely to your finger too and place it on my design. And this design is perfect for embellishing because it actually has these little dots around the doily shape that fit these rhinestones in quite well. So one by one, lifting them, and with the tip of my finger, positioning them into place. I like to work in sections so that I, I can get them all down and adhered very well. Instead of doing, you, I mean, you wouldn't be able to do the whole thing at once. So you wanna do them in sections here. So I have, what is that, about, about 10 on there. Set in place, I'm not gonna move it. I have a press cloth here, just a scrap piece of fabric, cotton fabric thin, and I'm gonna lay it on very gently, not moving anything, and then with an iron set on high, I'm gonna iron over these. Go over the area that has the rhinestones, and you wanna keep moving your iron around so that it's not in one place for a long time because you can burn your fabric. You do this maybe about five minutes. And what this is doing is melting the back of those rhinestones and adhering it to your bag. So you wanna make sure they're really on there. So if you wanna check them, just remove, put the iron down, trying not to move my design. Looks like they're on. You can see, they're not falling off. When one area is complete, I'm just gonna move on, do the same thing in the other area. And you could, if you didn't wanna do the whole perimeter of your design, you could just do an area in the center, but you're just gonna to continue to repeat that until you have all the rhinestones you want on your tote, and it'll be a really, really special wine bag.